Go ahead and take your Bibles and um, let's start in Galatians chapter 5. We're going to take some time. We've done this before, but we'll do it again. And uh, look at the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5. In uh, looking at this, uh, I first, I was going to talk about joy, not the person, but the quality. And the um, more I looked at it, more I thought, well, let's just, let's just hit them all. <laughs> and uh, so this is by way of introduction tonight. Galatians 5, let me just read a few verses from verse 22. Uh, you're probably familiar that right before that he lists the works of the flesh. And then he comes in verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let me just stop reading there. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit. I, I remember hearing um, uh, a man speak who um, he had gone to Africa to speak to some people there. And uh, he, he just... He didn't know what to say to him. And then he realized, well, everywhere in the world, people need the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, so he talked to them that the fruit of the Spirit was available to them in Africa, right there, <laughs> right then. And, uh, you know, the same is true everywhere in the world in every situation we face. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, God hasn't changed, and uh, it's available to us uh, here in Australia. <laughs> Even, you know, hanging off the bottom of the world, we can still have the fruit of the Spirit. And tonight, I just wanted to take a little bit of time and get you to consider the idea of these kinds of things happening just in our normal, everyday life. Uh, I think sometimes we, we feel like some of these things are just for super Christians or spatial situations and so on. And, and he says several times in this chapter... Like in verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. If you're saved, uh, live like that. Uh, verse 16, he'd said, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, and turn with me, if you would, to 1 Samuel chapter 9. Now this is, we're kind of starting at a, an odd angle, but you'll, you'll see where I'm going here. I'm not going to read a lot of verses here. Some of you will know this story, this account. Uh, this is when the nation of Israel is going to have a king. And God decides that it's going to be Saul. If you know anything about it, his, uh, well, I'll, I'll read verse 1, uh, 1 Samuel 9, 1. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish. I was thinking today, that, that'd be kind of weird to have your dad named Kish. But anyway, uh, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bacorath, they all had weird names, didn't they? <laughs> the son of Aphiah, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power, and he had a son. Here's the first guy with a normal name, whose name was Saul. A choice young man and a goodly. There was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Verse 3, and the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Now we would use the word today donkeys, all right? But this is just talking about those animals. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee and arise, go seek the asses. Go find the lost donkeys. Now, <laughs> it's kind of an odd place to start, but what I want you to see here tonight is uh, we need to see God in the ordinary things of life. Now, to them, this was an ordinary thing. To us, it would be unusual. We were driving down the road one time and a bunch of donkeys were there. Whoa, yeah, that's really weird, you know? Well, to them, that wasn't, that wasn't weird. That was just normal. And they got out. And uh, he sent his son to, to find them. Well, they, they struggled to find them. Uh, turned out later that they'd wandered home while they were looking for them. But down in verse 15, now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before. Isn't that intriguing to hear how, how the Lord puts that? God sp spoke to Samuel in his ear the day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow, about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. 
I've looked upon my people because their cry has come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold the man whom I spake to thee of. The same shall reign over my people. So, here's Saul out looking for donkeys. He thinks. Just an ordinary thing. But God has a purpose in it. And God has told Samuel, there's a guy coming. <laughs> and uh, interesting, verse 16, tomorrow about this time I'll send, I'll send thee a man. Um, you know, circum the circumstances of life, we don't see them the way God does. And, and sometimes we get past and we look back and say, oh, you know, God was doing this or doing that. But even that, sometimes we don't. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we get past and we look back and say, oh, I wonder what God was doing with that. Uh, sometimes because of how we've responded or one thing or another. But, uh, you, you know, the world promotes the idea that the ordinary is boring. Oh, you know, you don't want to just do ordinary things. You don't want to just do the normal things of life. Drop that and do something exciting. Well, I, I want to present the idea that most of life is ordinary. Most of life is just ordinary things. And if we don't have God in the ordinary, we're not going to have much of God. And uh, what I want, the way I want us to look at this uh, is when we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, we're not just talking about some mountaintop experience or some exciting thing. We're talking about the everyday things of life. You know, when you drop that thing and it goes down the crack and you, you think, oh, how did it get in there? And Oh, man, that's when you need the fruit of the Spirit. You know? When the guy pulls in front of you and you think, oh, you know, you know, there's just all kinds of ordinary things that happen, aren't there? And we need the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, you know, the world will, will tell you, oh, you, you need excitement. You need this and that. Uh, let me suggest a godly approach. Number one, see God in the ordinary. See God in the ordinary. Uh, you know, this was just a normal thing. The donkeys were lost. God, God says to Samuel, I'm going to send you a man. This man's going to be the next king. <laughs> uh, it was an amazing thing. You know, when you, when you put God into something, it makes the ordinary pretty special. And as Christians, we need to understand that just the ordinary things of life can, are a blessing, should be a blessing. Um, you know, you add Jesus to bread and fish and it gets pretty exciting. <laughs> you know, add Jesus to a bit of mud and he puts mud on the guy's eye and he goes away seeing. Uh, you know, it gets, it gets pretty interesting. Uh, you need to believe the scope of God's work. I, I read this to you, I can't remember which sermon it was, but in the last week or so. In Romans, he says, of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. That's Romans eleven thirty six. 36. What he's saying is, everything relates to God. God is, is in the everyday things of life. And uh, we need to understand that God works through the ordinary. Those donkeys were not instead of God's work. Those donkeys were God's work. You know, sometimes we, we think, oh, I'm just doing this. I'm just doing, you know, every day I get up and go to work. Well, praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> uh, it's just an ordinary thing, but the difference is not so much what you're doing, what you're doing, but why you're doing it. I heard an illustration of um, three men that were working with bricks. Somebody asked the first one, what are you doing? Well, laying bricks. They asked the second one, what, what are you doing? I'm building a wall. They asked the third one, what are you doing? I am building a beautiful cathedral. <laughs> they were all doing the same thing, but the why was different. And, uh, you know, in life, there, it's, it's mostly ordinary things. Understand the scope of God's work. It, it includes everything. Secondly, be thankful. You know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus uh, concerning you. Um, Sometimes we just need a different approach to the same thing. It's not necessarily that we need to be doing something different. Well, if we're doing something wrong, we do. But, you know, if we're doing the right things, uh, listen, you know, Saul looking for those donkeys. He was just doing what his dad told him to. I don't guess he ever found them, but anyway, uh, you know, God had a purpose in him looking and not finding. Uh, we need to, we, we can have three basic approaches to things. Having said that, you'll probably think of 12 more, but... Uh, yeah, when something's going on, you can be ungrateful. You see that a lot, don't you? Oh, Mom, I don't want to do that. 
Yeah, we can be so ungrateful. Or we can take things for granted is the second. And that's where we spend a lot of our time, isn't it? Just kind of ho-hum. Or we can be thankful. Yeah, the same thing. Sometimes uh, just that same thing can be um, changed in your view by the access that you have. If you haven't had water for a while, you'll get pretty grateful for a, a drink of water. Uh, where most of the time, well, you know, water's not too, too exciting. Uh, someone has said, spiritual work is not determined by what you do, but why you do it. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Uh, rejoice in the Lord, the Bible says. It's probably the same concept. Uh, see God in the ordinary. Secondly, assume God's presence. Now, maybe this is just another way to say the same thing. But we do everything we do in the presence of God. But let me ask you this. Where is God? Where is God? He's everywhere. <laughs> God is everywhere. You know, as soon as we, we pray things that don't make sense, Lord, please be with us. <laughs> That'd be like, uh, you know, you invite someone over to your house and you say, oh, I, I, I sure wish you could come over to our house. <laughs> I'm in your house. Oh, we just, we just wish you'd come to our house. <laughs> no. Uh, the Lord is with us. We don't have to ask him to be with us. We don't have to go somewhere to be in God's presence. You know, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm going to go here and oh, I'll find the presence of the Lord. No, the, the Lord is wherever you, you care to invite him to be a part of your life. Uh, the psalmist wrote, I should know this verse, Psalm 139, verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? And where can we go to, to get away from the Lord? Uh, what we're talking about here is walking with the Lord, uh, living and walking in the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. And uh, I want to encourage you as we, as we go through these in the, in the weeks to come uh, to apply this to just the ordinary, everyday things of life. Uh, Psalm 16, 11, he says, Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. In thy presence. So assume God's presence. Rely on God's character. As you're, as you're living life, um, the more you know about the Lord, the more you'll understand how good he is, how great he is. Uh, God is good. Uh, God always has a purpose. God is always working. And we don't always see it. Satan wants you to believe the opposite. You know, Satan's first temptation to Adam and Eve implied to them that God was holding something back from them. If you eat of that tree, ooh, you know, you'll be like God. He, doesn't, he, didn't, he didn't bother to tell them the downside of it. <laughs> uh, uh, Satan wants us to believe that God is not good, that God is not great. Um, 1 Timothy 6, he says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Uh, that's a hard balance to keep, godliness with contentment. Um, Romans chapter 8 and, and verse 31, he says, What should we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? You know, God is for us. Uh, we're on the same team. You know, we're not against the Lord. In Romans 8, 28, he says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Uh, we can rely on God's character. God is good. Uh, God is doing all for our good, not necessarily for our comfort. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard this, this song, but there's a song that says, When you don't understand and you don't see his plan, trust his heart. That, that's what we're talking about here. I rely on God's character. And then, finally tonight, Im imitate God's character. And yeah, when we're just looking at the ordinary things of life, um, and this is really what we're talking about with discipleship, you know, being like the Lord. Uh, Romans 8, 29, whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's what God wants for us, is to be like him, uh, to be like Jesus. Uh, just a couple of things. I mean, with discipleship, you could talk on and on, couldn't you? But uh, number one, be faithful. You know, a faithful person or a faithful part, for that matter, uh, means that you can count on it. It's reliable. First um, Corinthians 4 says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If you've got somebody working for you, one of the main things you appreciate is that they're faithful. You know, it's not necessarily their personality. 
I had a doctor who worked on me. I, I guess I shouldn't say he has the world's worst personality, but he, he had a very, he didn't have much personality. But I didn't care about his personality. I cared what he could stitch me upright and do the things that he had to, had to do. Uh, we need to be faithful. Uh, God is faithful. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Uh, that's, that's one of the most basic characteristics that we need to, to uh, uh, imitate of the Lord Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 9, uh, the Lord com com uh, compares it to athletics. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Not only faithful, but disciplined, under control, temperate. You, you know, these, these athletes, boy, they go to great lengths, don't they, to make sure that they're at the peak of their game. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. You know what he's talking about there? Shadow boxing. This is not a game. This is not shadow boxing. This is the real thing. But I keep under my body. That means I keep my body under control and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Uh, we need to be faithful. We need to be disciplined. Uh, read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Uh, look to minister and, and not just to be ministered to. Walk with the Lord. Uh, there's expressions in the Bible like that that if you don't really know what it means, keep looking at it and study until you do know what it means. I was reading the other day in, in um, Genesis how, um, who was the guy that walked with God and then he was not? Enoch, that was it. I was going to say Elijah, that's not right. He, he went up too. But, uh, you know, walk with the Lord. And if you don't know what that means, figure it out. <laughs> uh, walk with somebody else and see what it means. And then trying to apply it to the Lord. Uh, in the ordinary things of life, we can live for God. You know, you don't have to be a famous evangelist or, uh, you know, do some exciting thing. Yeah, just the, the basics of life. Be faithful. Uh, be disciplined. Uh, now, this is not to say that nothing exciting will ever happen to you. Uh, I've found if you follow the Lord, he, man, he makes lots of exciting things happen. And it's not that we shouldn't strive to be extraordinary in, in some ways. You know, we want to be the best person that we can be. But don't ignore the, the ordinary. Don't think they're just wasting time. That'll be most of your life. And it, if we're not faithful in the ordinary, we're not faithful. Um, feelings will follow faith. When we were going through Proverbs, one of the verses we memorized was uh, Proverbs 16, 3. Let's see, how did it go? I knew it this afternoon. Um, oh, I'm going to have to look it up. should have written down the first few words. 16.3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. It's an interesting concept, isn't it? If we'll just keep doing right, it'll help us in our thinking. It'll help us in, uh, in the, the things of life. Uh, feelings will follow faith. In, um, take a look in Jeremiah 17. I think this, this is the last verse we'll go to. Jeremiah 17. Most people are probably familiar with verse 9. You'll see that when we read it. But Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8 are what we're talking about tonight. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit. And here the illustration gives us a tree, just doing the ordinary things. Just standing there, just spreading its roots, you know, just doing the things that trees do. The next verse is what we want to avoid. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's real easy in your life to think, someday I'll do something. When this happens, you know, when you're young, it's when I get married or... You know, there's just, there's different things you, you put off. And when that happens, that's when, oh, life will get exciting then. Listen, life is exciting now. And uh, we need to just make sure we use the time that, that God gives us. You know, as a church, 
Uh, we have the opportunity to help a lot of people, the lost and saved alike. But for that to happen, a whole group of people have to be faithful. You know, uh, a church can't survive by people who just show up once in a while. It, it survives because people are faithful and, and disciplined. One of the most spiritual things you can do is to be faithful. Let me encourage you just to be faithful in the ordinary things of life and do it for the Lord. Uh, often use the expression, you know, brush your teeth for the glory of God. Most people have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I'm saying is whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Do it for God. Do the ordinary for, for the Lord. We're going to close with a song. It's, it's page 184.